Hi, this is Gail St. John, and this is Missing Persons on Psychic Network TV. And joining me is Brian Ladd tonight and uh, guest Susan. Hi, guys. Hi, Gail. Hi, Gail. Hi, We're going to be talking about the Lauren Dickens case um, tonight. That's the uh, missing 10-month-old from Memphis, Tennessee. And Susan, I know you have the information on this case, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you uh, read what you do have. Okay, Lauren went missing on September 7th. She's 10 months old. She was wearing brown onesies with a pink flower with pink dots. Her mother did not report her missing for eight days. She went missing from Riley apartment. The mom supposedly gave the baby to a white female aged between 40 and 50, shoulder length gray hair, wear glasses, had white shirt and khaki pants on. The bio father is in jail for unrelated charges. Mm -hmm. She contacted the dad in jail saying she couldn't care for the child anymore. There's no record of any phone call to the jail to the father. Mom had all the phone calls from the jail blocked because she could not receive them. Ellie has been to the apartment. Search warrants were served. The Gabber dogs also hit on something inside the apartment. Now let me interrupt um, you real quick. When you say apartment. Um which apartment? Because there seemed to be some confusion as to she was moving or said there was one address and she was moving to another address. So I, I think it's left people confused. What apartment are we talking about? Uh, Riley apartment. Okay, is that the one that's at Hickory Bluff? Yeah. Okay. Reason why yes. Now, now I'm going to put this map up here and I can. It's going to cover everybody, but I want everyone to kind of see. Um, there is the 2700 block of Hickory Bluff where she originally was supposed to be living, what, with her mother? No, she had moved out of her mother's house. Okay, but that, because they're, they're saying in, in the article that 2700 block of West Hickory Bluff was where she had been living with the mother and she moved to Yale. 4992 Yale, this is Raleigh Apartments in Memphis as well. And you can see the pinpoints on the map. It's really not that far away. They're tra tra traveling these roads. You can see it's really, it's not that big a distance. So she was in the supposed, supposedly moving, in the, in the, kind of in the middle of it. So, okay, go ahead, Susan. I just want to show where this was on the map. One, one location to the other. Okay, when they searched the apartment, they served a search warrant, and they took several items out of the apartment for DNA testing. Now, the paternal grandmother um, is not cooperating with law enforcement. Her home and car has been searched. Um... The mother has been arrested on charges of aggravated child neglect and endangerment. Okay, now doesn't that uh, carry quite a swift penalty uh, in Tennessee? Yeah. She, I think that they say that she could serve up to 15 years. years. For what? For Aggravated child neglect and endangerment. Okay, so like it. Okay, is is that is that so that's is that higher than what somebody would get in another state? I mean, I think it is. Okay, good, good. Okay, okay. Um, we got a lot of echo going in there, Brian. <laughs> um, the the thing I was trying to figure out now, if the families and not cooperating um is it just because they're not necessarily that they're not cooperating or that they're just wanting to keep quiet and they themselves don't know what's going on 
Um, that hasn't come out. Law enforcement has just said the family's not cooperating. Wow. Okay, that's not a good. That is not a good thing. Um, now she has a court date coming up. Uh, she did have a hearing, the first hearing. What do, do we know anything about that first hearing? And there, there was her in court. Um, you know, I'm just looking at the face. I'm seeing someone doesn't look like they really um, understand the what's going on in the sense of saying the consequences of their actions. I mean, just looking at the face, she's just like, no, oh, ho-hum. I gotta say, this doesn't feel like that any much different than the, in a sense, than the, than the Anthony case and the way she looks and she's, you know, just doesn't seem to, I could be wrong, but doesn't seem to show much emotion there. Okay, Susan. Well, her, her, her story has changed several times. Okay, so basically then saying she is being caught up in some of her own kind of mess and web here. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, that's, um, for me, it makes me wonder. I, I, I don't, you know, it's like anyone, I look at a person's face and you, and you see the blank kind of coldness in people's faces at times. And I don't know, I just don't see a whole lot of understanding here of what's going on. Now, uh, I was looking at an article, and the police are looking for, basically, DNA evidence, correct? Yeah. Okay. And the reason why I'm asking this is because um, I really, I, I couldn't believe when I read this. Now, I'm going to put this right up there, if everyone can see this. I don't know if everyone can make that out. Okay, but um, this is saying search warrants make it clear that the this is the was a typo here working theory that the, oh no make it clear that the working theory for the Memphis police is that the infant is dead. Outlining the evidence police targeted in searches of two homes, investigators wrote in warrants that they were seeking human remains of Lauren Dickens and trace DNA and biological evidence. Now that's written right into the warrant. So, um, I feel like police have a good handle on this, obviously. Um, knowing some, some basics, they're already, you know, they're already assuming that she is dead. So, um, I'll let you continue, Susan. I just wanted to make people aware that's, that haven't read these articles that that is there. The police have put that right out. Okay, both of the parents are very young. They're both 19. Um, law enforcement basically has said that they can charge her with murder, and her bond is set at $2 million. Wow. Now, I was looking up some things in Tennessee, and they have prosecuted, um, so legal precedence has been set. They have prosecuted without a body before in Tennessee. So, um, I, we very well could see this turn out to be um, a murder case. Very, very well. I, I, I really think that this is, you know, the idea, even if they don't uh, find Lauren Dickens, this is an um, extreme possibility working out this way. So, um, does the father of the baby know? He, he's in jail. Yeah, but is he aware of what's going on? He has no knowledge where that child's at. But is he aware of um, that she's missing, though? I mean, has he been kept? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, law enforcement has questioned him. And what about his, like, parents? Or Do we know anything about them? No. So we don't know if they're involved uh, in any way as far as uh, knowing what's going on. No. Okay. Hey, Susan, where does the grandmother live? 
Uh, couldn't find an address on her. Okay. Okay. Now, is uh, that is, is that as much as we know, Susan? Yeah, that's all that's come out. Wow. I, I checked every day for a news article on her, and there's been absolutely nothing. That's odd because when the whole thing was going on with um, um, Kaylee Anthony, it was daily, daily, several times a day. Right. It and, still is. Yeah, and this isn't getting the same coverage, but yet we have a 10 month old child missing. Absolutely. Odd. I will leave it rest there. People can draw their own conclusions as to why you don't hear so much on this case and you did the Anthony case. Yeah, yeah that's nothing new. It's, it's, that's definitely a pattern. I, I mean, Dave Johnson was just about the same age. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in, in the situation, it's just about, you know, endangered missing. Um, mom's in jail. Right. Um, same, same scenario. Well, not the same scenario, but I'm saying the same sort of case. And, and just looking at it, I just did a Google news search, and I couldn't find anything. Now, now Susan said she found a couple of art articles, but no, no coverage. Isn't that odd? I mean, seriously, yeah, isn't that odd? Yeah, it has a lot to do with race, I hate to say it, but I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a racial thing. Yeah. I can't figure out any other reason why. I, I can't either, to be honest with you. Um, <clears throat> I just, I was involved in the Anthony case, and I know it was like a circus. Every... A day there was more and every day there still is more and here we are this little baby 10 months old is missing yeah. you know what I think oh, she's missing too hey, well she's black uh, and they spent all am I am am I saying am I saying the news crews are prejudiced or or, or whoever's not putting no, this I don't out there I don't think that's it I Who think is that, it? I, I think that the people high up are prejudiced and they think they know what people want to see the, you know, there are other gets there. So we all want to see blonde-haired, blue-eyed little girls. I don't think everybody's racist. No, I don't think that. I don't. I mean, I'm not understanding why this case isn't getting the kind of coverage. Okay, let's say per se she isn't dead, like the police are saying. Um, what if she is was kidnapped or or, or whatever's going on here? The, the more we would put it out there, the more there would be maybe a chance that the child would be found. Was there an Amber Alert uh, issued? Probably not, huh? No. Uh, no, no, no Amber Alert, because the mom didn't report her missing for eight days. Yeah. And Kaylee Anthony was 30. Yeah. Was there an Amber Alert put out on Kaylee Anthony? No. Okay, so these cases are similar in that well, way. No, yeah, no, but as far as the Amber Alert, I mean, that was 30 days, too. I mean, like I said, the Amber Alert policy is kind of weird. Yeah. There's, there's okay, so, but there's no Amber yeah. Alerts put on either either one, but yet this case isn't drawing hardly any attention, really, in comparison to the Anthony case. Well, almost, almost no attention. I mean, the only people who would know about this case would be, you know, people affected in, in, maybe, the, in maybe Memphis. That's where she's from. Right. Yeah. What a shame. What a shame. Of course, then the Aji Desir has drawn very little attention as well. Yeah. Well, yes. So... There we have it. What a shame. Um, we need to draw more attention to cases like this. More children would be found. And more adults would yeah, be especially, found. Especially when they're classified in danger missing. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's a, we can do something about that. Yeah, and we've, the media can. Well, we've done that before. We've looked even at many adult cases where um, there was lots of coverage and then come to... Um, you know, someone, uh, I hate to say it, black, Hispanic origin and very little coverage. Lucky if you ever heard of them. True. So. Well, well Brian. Everybody knows who Natalie Holloway is. Well, yeah. Blonde hair, blue eyes. Natalie McCann. Kaylee yeah. Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well. Shame. Um, well, that, we'll save that for a moment. Yeah. That's Can a whole other show. I'm trying to fix that. A little bit. A little bit. Um, now, Brian, you did a dream on this. Yeah, uh, what I, I was a asking Susan in Skype if, if I can get an exact address of, of where she went missing and, and need the grandmother's address, too. Well, um, are you speaking of the grandmother as in her mother? Yeah. Okay, that's the 2700 block of Hickory. Hickory Bluff. Okay. Far Hickory as what Bluff. I could understand. Right. Eight, let's see. 
I wanted to have that done before you asked me about about this, but um, I'll just read you what I have so far, then I'll, I'll go. I'll I'll do a little research afterwards. Okay. Um, you, do you want it now? Is that yeah, what you want? yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Okay. The, there's five or six dream drawings. Uh, unfortunately, um, I don't think that L Lorraine is that how you pronounce it, Lorraine. Lauren, I believe Lauren. it's Lauren. Yeah. I, I don't think she's alive. Um, the first one is the drawing. It says uh, um, pods, P-O-D-S. I know what that is, so I'm not exactly sure where that's coming from, but um, pods is uh, their shipping containers. You can rent them. Right. Um, they put them on trucks. Well, there's a drawing of where it says pods. I don't have no idea what that means, but um, there's a drawing of one of those shipping containers. Um, the next one says um, a plastic bag overhead, um, tape under the sink, um, please have gloves. I believe that... Um, I don't know if the bag over the head actually killed her, um, but it looks to me like it, it did. Um, some sort of tape, I've, I've got it drawn there, um, I believe, of the sink, and actually where the tape is. It says, please have gloves. So I think the police probably already found some items, and they probably did find the, uh, um, the tape. Uh, next one says, uh, did not want, and I think it says CPS, which would mean Child Protective Services. Is that, is that what they call it in Tennessee or, or not? Um, to, it did not want CPS to find new abuse. Murder has hurt someone else. Um, I think possibly maybe she, she injured her uh, so badly that um, she would have to take her to the hospital, mm -hmm. uh, and then they would find out it was definitely abuse. Um, that could be anything from you know a cigarette burn to a broken arm or, or whatever, something that would definitely need medical attention. I guess a cigarette burn wouldn't, but somebody, she wanted to prevent her own self from getting in trouble. The shipping container comes up again too. It says buy shipping container wet ground. It looks like the same looks like the same thing. Oh, those are done twice. It's just it says shipping container uh, and it says wet ground. It looks to me like the same drawing um, of the first shipping container. I scanned that one twice or came up twice. Uh, next one says grandmother took her. You will find her not deep and in the word shipping again. Um, it's not deep. Does not necessarily mean that she's buried. Okay? Right. And it could mean something totally different. But look to me, it looks like that the grandmother may know where where she's at, um, and could be buried. And I definitely think the police will definitely find her um, probably pretty soon. There was another dream drawing. And I guess I scanned. I think I scanned one image twice. Um, if I can find that, I'll read it to you. What I was trying to do is I'm going to look at this. I'm going to do a dream again tonight, and I'm going to mark those addresses. To see if I can get a more specific location. I mean, okay. more than likely, if it's a grandmother and a mother, usually they're not too smart when they go to bury a body, and I don't think it'll be too difficult. It, mo it could be even in their own backyard mm -hmm. or a friend's backyard or something. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know what you got, y'all. So. Okay. Um, well, if you're done there, Brian, I'll, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, and not yet. Them. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, just, Double checking to make sure I did. Did you? No, that was just in there twice. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, I was scanning. I was scanning all this stuff in. So it's, there's five dream drawings, and they are posted. Okay. Right there. And I'll do it again tonight, and if I can get you a location, I will. Okay. Um, That's all I got. You know what? The first thing I want to say is I did get the death symbol on this case. Unfortunately, I I don't like it when I see that. Um, and I did get that right away. I worked on this case the other day before I, you know, read anything or had any knowledge for, because of knowing I had to do the show. <clears throat> and I actually wrote down some things and made some drawings too, Brian, which I don't always, but I couldn't figure out what I was seeing. So I actually made some drawings, which I will scan <clears throat> and have you post these. Um, my first initial thing that I saw was a covering like you're talking about, a bag. Um, I didn't see the tape, <clears throat> but I kept seeing a bag. And then another bag over it. As if her body was folded and wrapped in something tightly. Okay. Which, yeah, I did find that other dream drawing, too. As soon as you're done, I'll read it. Okay. <laughs> Which was um, rather odd to me because they kept show I kept seeing the body folded and, and wrapped. It wasn't laid out like you'd think. Uh -huh. It was actually folded and, and then put in something wrapped with her. 
<clears throat> um, whether it's a, a garbage bag, something, but wrap tightly with uh, a plastic and, and, and tape, it felt like to me, from what I could see. Um, <clears throat> I was having a hard time seeing it. I don't know why, but it looked like it was dark. It was dark wherever it was going on where you couldn't see real well. <clears throat> and I saw something square, which I first thought was a dumpster. And I kind of, I, um, I, oh, I just kind of a little bit freaked out when you said about the pod because I saw something square like a dumpster, but it didn't have the dumpster hole, so I couldn't figure it wasn't a dumpster. So I didn't know what it was, and I drew the square box. Yeah, then they do have hookups. You know how dumpsters have where you can, where they on the side you lift them up. Yeah. The pod containers have something very, I think, very similar. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm not totally sure on this, but I know that they can they can lift them up. They actually they have trucks that come out and they use some sort of crane, but I think they can lift them up with. Uh, um, uh, well, you oh, I can't believe I can't know the name. Well, you see, you know, uh, uh, forklifts, forklifts. Yeah, how they have um, at the sides, you know, the dumpster where it's open. See, I, I looked uh -huh. all around, I couldn't see it, and it just was a square. So right. I I drew the square. And to me, it almost reminded me of a shed or something, but because there was, you know, it seemed like there was a door, but there was no like opening, opening like a. That's what. And you said that I was like, okay, wait a minute, maybe it is a pod because I kept drawing that square over and over and looking at it and thinking, what is this? I don't know what it yeah. is. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And I know the word pods is written all over the thing. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I, I did see it in the dream, though. Yeah, and see, I, I didn't know. see that. I didn't see that. All I kept seeing was the square, and I couldn't figure out what it was. But what bothers me, though, Brian, about this is is there's other stuff in there, not just her. Or there's other stuff around where she is or where she was first placed. Mm -hmm. I mean, as if there maybe is being used. And then put into something like a chest or a, you know, a small, you know, something. I, I feel like it originally was put into something and then moved. Now this okay. moved before this all came about. Out in the news that she was missing. So I don't know how how all so this is going to fit together. You know, you said, Susan, you said seven days. She said she was missing. Uh, the mom didn't report her for eight days. She went missing okay. September 7th. Wow. And, okay, wow. well, wow. where did they get the eight days from? I mean, did somebody actually see the kid eight days ago? Is that what they're saying? Or, or that what? was the last sighting. Was uh, Okay, so that probably is the day that she she was probably murdered then. I think that the mom would probably use the farthest out she could, could right. go without the... So, um... But I do think that police will find her in this case. Yeah. Because I also I have the world's worth drawing, but I also draw drew a dog or a German Shepherd uh, kind of dog um, finding it, uh, and it looked to me like a how you'd have a parking lot kind of by a store, you know, like by a old store. Um, I don't know if anyone's familiar with big lots. Okay, I am. and you know how can sometimes it can be in the kind of a little cruddy area, and uh, there'll be a back area, and uh, maybe there's something sitting there. But I kept seeing like a post light with kind of battered concrete around it. You know what I'm you're talking about? It's it, like it'd been backed into, and you know it'd been there for years. Was old, and I saw rust. And it's like a you know the post coming up out of the concrete where there's a light. I could see that from across the area of the parking lot where where I felt like this that Lauren Dickens might be. Susan, you said that uh, um, she said that she she told the boyfriend about it. She she couldn't. Yeah, she, she told she told the, uh, the baby's daddy that she couldn't take care of the baby anymore, and supposedly the baby's daddy is the one that told her to give her to an unknown white female. Okay, so she's she's pointing the blame toward him already, and there's something definitely wrong then in this case. Right. Because if she didn't make that phone call, I mean that's all fabricated that something seriously did happen. Oh yeah. Because, because they would know they know that I doubt she called. The police would know if she made the call or not. There, there is no record of that phone call. Right. 
So I'm wondering if she's already is trying to establish some type of some type of she's already working some type of plan, some some something to yeah. To get but away with. Brian, the problem is she's already contradicted herself so many times. Sound familiar? Mm hmm You know the. Um, so it's gonna lead to it's gonna lead to her, her uh, have some problems here because she's already contradicted herself and you saw what the police put out they're looking for the remains now the police are already saying they know this so then they found they've already found something then right right and I read where they picked up a hundred and eight items and took it in that's a lot of items yeah they took they took the baby's car seat they took uh, toys. He took the high chair. But I do think this will be that she'll be found. Uh, Brian, did you said you found something else? You're yeah, on. it's just I told you there's there's one more drain draw. And what what this one says it says behind house with white shed, um, not not at apartment building. I know you said apartment building too before. Right. Um, so if, if if does the grandmother live in an apartment? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'll try tonight. I saw broken glass okay. in a parking lot. Like, you know, I mean, this is the area right there by where it's at. Possibly a store or something like that. But I saw, um, like I said, I kept drawing that square and I still don't know what it is. So, you're saying pods. It's extremely possible, Brian, because I just kept drawing that square, but I also kept drawing the dogs around it. And there's some grass growing up by the street light. You know what I mean? It's it's an untaken care of parking lot. I don't mean it's a nice parking lot. It Maybe the store is not even open anymore. I don't know. But I could see the light reflecting off of this white, whatever this thing is that's white, I could see the light reflecting off of it. Okay. I do think the pods contain it. I think they're white. Um, I guess I could just Google that. Yeah, I don't um, know. Yeah, but like I said, yeah, I, I, I know what the pot containers are, so that might be something that I would just maybe a thought in the dream. Unfortunately, I don't remember any of this. Um, but tonight, I'll try to, I'll try my best to remember as much as I can when I, I wake up and m make some more. I don't so feel that, that we're going to go a distance of any more than a uh, uh, mile and a half here. Do you, Brian? Yeah, I think I think you I think that she's definitely close. Yeah. Um, you know, pro probably in it, like I said, it's probably been like you said, it's already it's probably been looked at once before. Right. So it's probably pretty pretty obvious what happened. Uh yeah, and I, and I, I believe they will find uh, where she is. Uh, this is not one of those cases where I think she's just going to be lost forever. That this child uh, remains will turn up. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm looking. The pots containers are white. On the sides, the the letter P O D S is written in white letters with a red background. It's, you cannot miss it. Okay. Um, sometimes the doors. It looks like to me the doors are blue. Um, they are twelve by eight by eight. See, I never saw any. Uh, I didn't. I didn't see any. Uh, okay. I saw a well, door. It looked like, I don't, like I, I said, it looked like a five, shed to me. Going, it's above. It looked like a shed or yeah. something, but I didn't see the roof, so I couldn't. The shed. I couldn't figure it out. I, I didn't know exactly what it was. The the roof itself actually looks like it, it, it's a shipping container with like a little uh, roof on. I guess that you I don't know if you'd call it a roof, and it's got a little overhang on the on the top. Okay. And I believe that is a way that they used to stack maybe stack them. Right. Um, and connect them together. I'm gonna have to take a but, look at um, one of those because I, I haven't at a seen one. Side, pods is not all written on the whole. All the, it's not written on all the sides. You could be looking at it on another side. Okay, because I didn't see it on the particular side I was looking at. Like I said, I was so confused sitting there trying to figure out what this white thing was. Yeah, um, well, I don't think I did either. What I'm saying is, is I didn't write it on the side. I just wrote it above it, like I, I knew what it was in the dream. Okay. I didn't. I mean, I drew the. I drew the. I drew the container itself, but I didn't write. I mean, pause is like almost. As, I mean, it's written huge. Yeah, I drew the square two or three times here on my. Well, like three times on my paper trying to figure out what it was. Just kept you know, well, looking at it, and the type door I saw didn't wasn't really consistent with a shed, but it was somewhat shed like. So I, I I was really confused. I wrote on the paper very confused as to what this square is. And I'm I'm looking just to see if they have these things in Tennessee. I think they're national though. Oh, pods are everywhere. 
Yep, they sure are. Um, and it, we can even look up, there's, there's an address here in Memphis, I believe. Now, I'm just wondering because um, I saw like an, a car hauler not too far away either. And it was kind of rusty, or maybe it would look like a car hauler to me, maybe it wasn't, but it had rust on it, like parked not too far from a store either. And I'm just looking at pieces that are references as to location. Okay, I have the Pods Memphis um, website right here. You know what's sad in this case, in, in a lot of these cases, is that probably that if, if somebody would have intervened or, or taken that kid away, then I'm sure the mother was probably going through some, some problems or whatever. It only takes a couple seconds to do something you'll, you know, uh, regret the rest of your life. Right. If somebody would have maybe helped out or stepped in or prevented that, maybe 10 seconds, that whatever happened, it what probably would be more than that. Did the grandmother know that there was a problem? That's the, well, it was, you know, and it always goes back to probably personal relationships. Right. You, you know, take, I mean, it always does. Um, you know, it's really sad. I mean, we, we do have programs out there, but a lot of people don't know how to use them or they don't want to use them. I mean, I don't know in this case, but I'm telling you, it's, it's like 10 seconds and that's all it takes. And, and we, you know I mean, probably would never would have happened if I think, if, 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 some, some, if somebody would have been there to help her. It doesn't seem like it was. I'm not sticking up for her either. No. But even if she could have Shelby called Dew someone. Shelby Drive, Memphis, Tennessee. There's two, there's two locations. One on Shelby Drive and there's no, no one on Meltech Boulevard, both in Memphis. You know, the shame of it is you can call someone. If you're having problems and you're struggling, uh, you know, I want that to be known to anyone who is having problems. Man, there are man, places man. you can call Yeah. to get I've help. Kids, sometimes I really want to, you know, I mean, I don't want to hurt them, but I know, I know when, like, you know, the lady breaks something really, you know, expensive and everything. You know, you don't can't. Oh, yeah. You just walk away for a while. I raised four <laughs> kids. I know. Sometimes you just, you I've know, it's like, wow. Uh, you know, we you don't can't. have anything in our house anymore, Gail. Anything that we have that's worth anything is destroyed, and you get used to it. Yeah. Well, I had four <laughs> kids, Brian. I know. I had four kids, and um, it seemed like I swear I never had anything worth yeah. anything because if I did, it would lasted five minutes, and then it was wrecked. I mean, Ten months old, that's easy to adopt out or have somebody watch for you. Or, or it's, just, it's just too easy to get help. Well, to seek help um, yeah. if you're having issues and, and stress in your life. Like that, there are so many services that can help you in those situations. Um, yeah. And, and, and so anyone you know, that's listening realizes that you know, this, there are places to go. There are authorities to call. They don't take you in for this. They offer you help and solutions. They work with you, and um, you know. Uh, hopefully, uh, this won't happen again. But unfortunately, I'm afraid it will with someone else. And and this is the sad part of what's going on in our country. It seems to be, as we work cases, we've seemed to see a flood of this kind of situation anymore. Yeah, that's true. And like I said, it's only a few seconds, you know, of, of you doing something wrong that that changes everything. Mm -hmm. And it, this is probably just anger. It's probably frustrated. Something probably happened. Um, ten months old. I mean, babies, you know, crying. And at that at that point in time, ten months old is when they start to walk. Um, you know, maybe it could have just been an accident. She couldn't deal with it. But um, yeah. not according to the dream. But I'm just saying. But you know, may, maybe an accident and something happened. And instead of just telling the police what yeah. happened, right. she didn't think the police believe her, and so just went called the grandmother and they went and disposed of the body. But at this point, it's kind of too late for that. She does have another child. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> she shouldn't anymore. Yeah, she has a, uh, what is it, Susan? Uh, right, but the, the kids a, know not. A okay, son. The kids, okay. Yeah. And he's three. Yeah. And has he ever, have he ever been abused? Do we know? Um... I don't know if I read anything about that, Susan. Do you? Probably not. No. So, I mean, I mean, it's a shame. I, the, the, yeah, it it's come to. It I really feel bad. Um, the one thing I will say, um, you know, if for any reason they don't find uh, Lauren, I will, on my own dime, go to the area. And see if I can do anything. Okay, and how, how far away is that from you? 
I haven't checked Memphis, but uh, probably maybe uh, seven hours. Okay, so it's farther Six. away than you went for Venus. Six, yeah, yeah, but it's not that bad. But I'm will I'm willing to go there, because this area is very you know I I feel like it's very clear uh, area. Once I get there, I think I I wouldn't have any trouble feeling where it was at. Okay, I'm I'm just putting it I'm putting a Hickory Bluff. Uh, Twenty seven hundred block, a Hickory Bluff. Matter of fact, I had uh, did you see the map I put up there earlier? No, yeah, I had to shut it down because that was causing the echo. Okay, um, let me put. You talk about the broadcast. Um, right there, Brian. If you can see this map that I have up there, and I don't know. I can't see it. I mean, later when you look at it. Okay. And you'll okay. see the 2700 block of West Hickory Bluff, Memphis, Tennessee, is where they're saying the 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 grandmother was, and she left okay, to go to this Yale, Memphis, 4992 Yale, Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. Now, are the apartments are they connected together? It's just like because I'm right now I'm looking at uh, both. Um, look like. Yeah, it looked oh. like to me both complex. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's two different complexes, but they look connected, you know. Okay, I'm looking at the wrong thing, man. But what fascinated me was the parking lot. Okay. So I need to blow a map up. I can't do it right now because okay. I, I opened Google. 4992 Yale. Yale? Yeah, Y A L E. Drive? Just Yale, it said. Hickory Bluff. And the I mean, just. The other one is 2700 Hickory Bluff. There's two addresses. Okay, okay, so 14902 Yale, Memphis, Tennessee. 49, 4992 Yale. Okay, okay, 4993. Yeah, you might want to get that yeah. right. 4992. Yeah, I'm doing it. Yale. Yeah. And okay. the other is 2700. Uh, block of West Hickory Bluff, and um, okay. now on the way I understood it. Now, Susan, correct me if I'm wrong. The grandmother was at the Hickory Bluff. Yeah. And the daughter had, in other words, um, Shakira had lived there before and was moving. Or in the kind of in the middle of moving into that, and they said they saw just a baby crib there. Um, at the four nine nine two Yale. But they took several items out of the apartment: baby the toys, the high chair. See, I think they might have done that at the mom's. I think it's been a little. I think it's a little confusing. The way the articles read, it was a little confusing. No, that was out of the mother's apartment. Okay. Wow. Well, they did. I know 108 items. That's a lot of items. So, Absolutely. So, you know, they're on to something. It's a matter of locating. Um, I have not, I can't pull up Google Earth when I'm doing this, when I'm recording a show because it crashes my computer. But after this, I'm going to go ahead and, um, and, and pull up, uh, Google Earth and look at some maps and see and also that'll be posted on uh, psychicnetwork.tv as well and I think Brian you're going to be putting that on your site and as well as uh, putting that yeah, up. Yeah I haven't figured out how we're going to put it on Psychic Network but I guess I will. Well we'll, figure, we'll get it all figured out yet. Yeah. We have to get a site going yet. Um, still working yeah. on that site but it'll be up on my site as well psychicgale.com and um, which is uh, Psychic Gale G A L E, just so everyone knows that. Okay, uh, four the, the four nine nine two Yale Road is that grandmother's? That's or, where she moved to. That's where the mom moved to, Shakara. Okay, okay, okay moved to here. Right. And I can forward you that map too if you want. But okay, and, okay, so and then left from that address again one more from time. From the twenty seven hundred block of West Hickory Bluff. Thank you. I'm, I'm putting it all in the case file. Um, right. I, I, more than likely, I wouldn't pick a body to where you're going to move to. So, so. I would... Um, I'm feeling more towards the the Hickory Bluff area in a way, but I, you know, I haven't pulled out the map yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna open the map and I want to look and see if there's anything I can find 
that looks similar to what I was talking about. I mean, obviously, well, there's a when shed. You... there is definitely a shed at the other one, but you know, I don't. Okay. I mean, there's sheds all over the place. I don't. I don't really I'm, know. I'm interested in that parking lot that I saw. Two seven zero zero West Hickory Bluff takes me in the middle of the freeway. Right, but it's the apartments, I believe, over to the left when you look at it. See that big... Okay, so when you say apartments, do you mean duplexes? Yeah. Or, or they, duplexes that are connected to get townhouses? Yeah, yeah, that's what it looked like to me. Well, we don't know which one? No. All it said it was that? the 2700 block. Okay. So, from there, I'm assuming... I'm looking, like I said, I'm looking at parking lots. Okay. And if I was there, it'd be a lot easier, too, to know... Uh, the feelings that go with it. But I'm going to look at the maps and we'll get that posted as well. Um, Susan, do you have any more? No, I don't. Uh, Brian, do you have any more? No, but um, I'd like to bring up Achi, if you, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Achi Desir, uh, he went missing over a year ago from um, Immokalee, Florida. Gail's been down there to help search for him. Um, and, and sadly enough, I mean, I'm glad Gail went down there, but sadly enough, Gail going down there is the only news article that comes up now. They wouldn't um, even... You know, well, the, we this did, is important. We got... So, we got... You know, I hate to interrupt you, Brian, but it just really upset me. Yeah. We got lip service. We were told that one, sure. they had searched the but you area. you get that. It doesn't yeah. matter what you do. Yeah, You're but psychic. here's... This, this seems real familiar. Yeah, we right. had searched that area before with dogs. Remember the Kaylee Anthony case? Yeah, we had searched that area, and I said, no, I'm telling you... I'm you can't go to court for that, too, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I got a subpoena. I'm loving it. But anyways, um, what bothers me, Brian, I, I, I'm, I'm almost positive Aji is back where he said. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you on that. On that. And but damn it, sorry, my my language. Damn it, I'm going back. And we got two cases. The kids are the same age. Um, you know, same endangered um, thing. Both both from Florida, not too far apart. Uh, went missing one one woman well, missing in February, one went missing in January. Um, everything else is about the same. The only the only difference was the skin color. Um, yeah. One one gets national coverage and another one gets nothing basically. Uh, you know, we've had all that posted. We we do run the web website. Uh, Deborah runs the website findaji.com if anybody's interested in looking at that. It's f i n d a d j i dot com. Right. I just want to put that out. That's what I got. And it's a shame. But, you know, I am going back. Uh, uh, mating season. Uh, they're pretty dormant in December, so I may you, try you to go back. You might want to say what mating season for what? <laughs> oh, gators. <laughs> yeah. okay. Gators. Mating season for the gators. And we were there. The last time I was there searching for Aji, it was mating season. And um, they were very aggressive. And it was very dangerous back in the area we were in there because right on the Everglades. Uh, area and it, it was very very dangerous. I think we brought back some showed you some pictures. Um, we yeah we got those posted too. They were crawling. I, if we could have just got pictures of all of it, I don't. Everybody would have been had the daylight scared out of them because they were just everywhere. There was this little uh, fresh water. I want to call it a creek, um, which led to another body of water, and they were just laying in there and coming up out of it onto the onto the little dirt path that we were walking on. Uh, Brian, just, yeah, the, it's not was not for the faint at heart, okay? Yeah. It really wasn't. And you think of the you know, now these children in this little complex area were crossing and going into there, getting oranges and bananas all the time. Mm -hmm. In order to cross this, now let me tell you, you had to lay a board across and cross this creek filled yeah, we saw it. filled with gators. Right. But the, the the fact is that even if if, a, if, a, if an alligator did take him, in, even if it did, um, from what I know, what I've been told, there were, there's some there'll be some type of trace. Not too many people go missing, even children from alligators. There would be something. So that tells me that the area wasn't searched. Right. That they they'll regurgitate something. There'll be some type of clothing. There, there'll be some trace left behind. We tried, um, but with it being mating season, it was so dangerous back here. The boar were phenomenal, uh, and the snakes as well as the gators and I would like to go back in December when they're possibly a little more dormant and uh, go back in there and there's an area that we couldn't get to and I'd like to see if I could get back there and check that out and like I said I did really feel like I got lip service um, well, and, and it wasn't checked like it was supposed to have been checked 
right? No, I think what what I think happened, like I said, he, he I think he just wandered off. He actually, I think he followed a dog. And if you if you check the weather conditions um, for Florida, I mean, it almost it dropped to I believe below freezing. Um, that one, it was very it was a very odd weather for for Florida at that time. It was kind of odd. Yeah. Um, I think he just he probably suffered hypothermia, um, and um, pro- probably took shelter somewhere. Didn't make it through the night. Um, now, if an alligator was involved, now they do eat uh, items that are dead. I know it sounds kind of harsh, but correct? Well, don't they? Like- they more or less like their food to be alive and moving when they get it. But they don't think they eat. There, there's not too many alligator attacks, though. Are there? Uh, you know, I guess Brian. So I'm thinking. Live in Florida? <laughs> I'm thinking if I'm, I was down there. Um, and Galena was down there, and, and if we'd have hung out, we'd have, we'd have been attacked. Okay? I mean, if we'd have just stayed in one spot, hung out, what if he bent down over the water and was looking in the water? Well, what I'm saying, I mean, that, that could that could happen, but there's going to be something left. Yeah. And he was wearing clothes. He's wearing, there's, there's going to be something. There's going to be a bone. There's going to be shoe, something. A bone, that something. I don't think it but the, the water was so thick with lily, uh, uh, like lily that. pads out there. Same uh, thing with with Neely Anthony. They, they didn't search because there was, was the water was too high. Well, the water does go down once in a while. Yeah, it's got to. Now the gators just move into the deeper area over there. There was a deeper area over there to move into. Um, Galena actually. Well, I'm saying if he is deceased, there's got to be there's some evidence there. I, I would think, but I don't think he was there. Um, I I think he may have been further down. Uh, there, what I call the bore area, further down. Um, there are some things that we never were able to check out because of the dangers. And, I, and I'd like to go back when uh, uh, at least the gators are a little more uh, dormant, December maybe, and, and check out this other area. I do know that, the, I believe it, it's Color County? Color County? Mm-hmm. Sheriff's mm-hmm. Office? I, I do know that they, they put a lot of time and effort to it. There's not too many people that work, work there. Right. Um, so, I mean, well, maybe I they, they you, have enough resources. But and if you if you talk to Galena, you, and, and I know um, Tamara was out there with me, and uh, when you go back in this area, you got this this little farm kind of community here, and you go back in this area behind this fence, and all of a sudden it's like the land time forgot. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's instantaneous. There's not a whole, it's just, you, you'd have to see it to believe it. Yeah. So I think if a child was got, got back there and got lost off on his own, he'd have a heck of a time finding his way back. Yeah. The website's find Aji, or you can just Google Aji Desir. We're number one. So. Well, thank you, Brian, for bringing that up again, yeah. and I will hope I get a chance to go back this year yet. Um, Susan, thank you for being on. I appreciate it. As, as usual, your information uh, is is uh, something that we need for every show, and you're always uh, good as far as having all the information when we need it. Brian, thank you for doing your dreams. You're welcome. You know, I'll have to, I'll try I'll try something tonight, and if I get it, I'll post it. Okay, man, I, I will scan that uh, stuff that I have as soon as I can, and get that over to you so you can get that up. I want to thank everyone for being out here tonight. We were late with our show, as usual, technical problems. Um, just getting back into doing all these things and had some new programs to work with. So thank you, everyone, and uh, you guys have a good night.